Baldur's Gate 3 is an absolute gem of a game that I just cannot get enough of. Larian Studios has done the impossible and perfectly recreated exactly what it is like to play Dungeons and Dragons. Fuck. That is why, with the release of Honor Mode, I have decided to put that title to the test and reclaim my honor. Or rather, Prince Zuko's. Prince Zuko is a character from Avatar The Last Airbender who is obsessed with reclaiming his honor. I think it's your honor! WHERE?! And that is what we are going to be doing today in Baldur's Gate 3. There will be blood, there will be heartbreak, but more importantly, there will be honor. Now, a few ground rules before we start. Rule 1. No dishonorable combat. I am not allowed to have a surprise round that the game itself does not give me. That means no sneaking up on my enemies and taking pot shots at them, no setting up traps in an attempt to cheese an encounter, none of it. How can Zuko reclaim his honor if he doesn't face his challenges head on? Rule 2. I can only use people and abilities that are at least somewhat relatable to Avatar The Last Airbender. This means that if I recruit Shadowheart to play as my Katara, I cannot use anything that the normal Katara wouldn't use. That means no guiding bolt, no command, none of it. The only spells she's allowed to use are the ones that fit her thematically, such as cure wounds or create water. I am also making an exception for the guidance cantrip because Katara is a very helpful person and if you have a problem with that, fuck you, fight me. Rule 3. No looting corpses. Looting dead bodies is dishonorable and if I end up looting something, I cannot use it and must immediately drop it. This does not apply to loot that is mandatory for progression in some way, but given the depth of the game and the foresight of the developers, we should be fine. Finally, rule four. I must save the Grove and the Tieflings by defeating the three main villains of Avatar The Last Airbender. Admiral Zhao, played by Dror Raxlin, Hama the Bloodbender, played by Priestess Gut, and the worst of the worst, my rival and sister, Princess Azula played by Minthara. Without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, I need a plan. Baldur's Gate has a maximum party size of four, which means I have three slots I can give out to my very own team avatar. The first slot is a given that's going to Shadowheart as my Katara. She already starts off with high wisdom and oh, that sucks. So it just fits and it'll make sense for our next decision, Sokka as our ranger. Sokka as a non-caster opens up a lot of doors for me on the melee front, which will be super helpful since our final slot will be going to Uncle Iroh as our wizard. And I know what you're thinking, what about Aang? Don't worry, we've got that covered. He's perfect. While I understand that Uncle Iroh is in fact Daddy Iroh, I feel he would be better suited as a ranged option with a mastery over both fire and lightning, so unfortunately we gotta dump that sick bod he worked so hard on. This also means that I need two hirelings, which cost 100 gold each. Additionally, the Sokka I'm going to use is the wrong class, so we'll need an extra one 100 gold to change it. That's a total of 300 gold, but all of that is pointless until I get Withers. We're going to start off by making our character. I chose Gith Yankee for this because as a race, they embody the sheer empirical testosterone that the Fire Nation radiates, and because I think they're cool, Istic. Unfortunately, there's only one burn scar you can use, and it's not quite right, but it's what we got, so if you have a problem with it, please tell me in the comments. Please, I'm begging you. I need you to insult me. Please. Please do it, I need- After declaring our unwavering bromance for a 112 year old Octoboy, we wake up on the Nautiloid and immediately are faced with a problem in the form of the objective best girl, Lazelle. I have to use Lazelle in order to progress through the tutorial, which already breaks rule number two. So for this, I'm going to pretend that she's loot that is mandatory for progression because this bitch is a treasure. After slapping my way through some puppies, I wound up near a river on the Sword Coast. My first goal at this point is to reach level three. At level 3, I unlock a subclass which will give Zuko access to his fire powers and will also unlock purchasing hirelings from Withers. Without hirelings, this run would be virtually impossible, so I set out on my journey and start with recruiting Katara. After that, I needed to storm my way through the overgrown ruins in order to reach Withers, but fortunately, there's a door near where you find Shadowheart that takes you almost directly to him. All you gotta do is pass a DC-20 sleight of hand check. Fuck. Well, with that out of the way, we make our way up towards the back door of the ruins, which is being guarded by a man who needs some moisturizer and his boss, Gumblegunk. Gumblebink doesn't like that I'm snooping around his crash site, but he has nothing to fear. I am a peaceful fire nation, and surely he will understand my need to go inside the ruins. 
fuck. After peacefully dispatching some secret Fire Nation spies, I made my way into the ruins after honorably lying to the doorman. Technically, it wasn't a deception roll, so it counts. After I put him into forever sleep, I approached my next obstacle, the door. There was another enemy in the room, but I... Uh, yeah, she's sleeping. The door, unfortunately, is locked and cannot be lockpicked. The correct way to open this door is to go into the next room and find the secret switch, but there are like four people in there and that is way too scary for me right now. Fortunately for us, Larian allows us to cheat by basically getting to look at the door's stats, which lets us know that the door is weak to slashing, fire, and force damage. Now, I don't have slashing or force damage quite yet, so in typical Fire Nation style, I went for the truly supreme element. Okay, new plan, find a sword. Now, I'm not allowed to loot dead bodies, but fortunately, we have a very alive potential follower named Lazelle sitting in a cage just over yonder. After freeing her and immediately sending her back to camp, I grabbed her sword and went to town on that door. Fuck you, door. With my path forward cleared, I conquered a trap tomb by freezing time, which is something Duco can totally do, don't look it up, and finally making my way towards the crypt, grabbing some loot along the way. In order to gain access to Withers, we need to deal with the skeleton lingering around the room. Now, fortunately, the skeletons are weak to bludgeoning damage, which is what both Katara and I can do, but this is honor mode, and the fights are way harder. So, I also concocted a foolproof plan of funneling the skeletons into the smaller room and using the doorway as a choke point to take them down one at a time. Okay, so all I have to do is just not miss. Okay, so just walk through the fight. That's the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. It has been like five rounds. Hey guys, look, it's me. Come in here. I'm open for business. You know, honestly, I'm surprised I haven't taken any damage yet. Yeah, okay. Watch this. Watch this first try. Nailed it. That's fine. I'm just going to go for it. Awesome. I'm starting to question if this is worth it. Yeah, she's she's dead. Oh, I can just help you. Mostly because you're in my way and I can't do anything else. You can't hit me if you can't see me. Okay, so now that that's blocked, don't you dare. Why can they see through the fog but I can't? Okay, so like if I don't ever get hit again and I nail this, then we should be fine. Oh my god. Okay, wait. No, no, no. I think I got this. Let's fucking go, dude. Yes. Ugh. I did not think that was going to happen. All according to plan. And finally, after only about an hour of playing, I acquired Withers and sent his wrinkly ass back to camp. Now all that's left is to reach level three. Until I get hirelings, I don't feel comfortable taking on the tomb robbers from the previous room. And considering I grabbed all of the other XP in this general area, that meant that I had to move forward and take on the goblins. In a previous run where I didn't allow Shadowheart, this didn't go so well. But with Katara on my side, I just knew this time would be different. All according to plan. Unfortunately, that did not put us at level three. So I head inside the grove, do some minor chores here and there until I finally get enough experience to unlock my subclass, unlock the hirelings, and finally begin the next step of my adventure. Now that our party is at level three, I finally unlock the ability to burn people alive and also acquire hirelings. I go ahead and grab Sokka and Iroh and begin planning my next steps. Ideally, I would have liked to be level five before taking on the goblin camp, but the increased amount of experience to gain carried an increased amount of risk. So for now, I settled on level four being my goal and continued outside of the grove. Honestly, I was beginning to get a little worried that this challenge was going to become a little too easy. While I had met some significant resistance along the way, most of that could be attributed to the fact that I only had two people. And now, with my party size and strength doubled, I was in a much better position. I was so confident, in fact, that I decided, fuck it, let's fight some owlbears. After talking the cultists down from suicide by fuck around and find out, I convinced them to avenge their fallen companion and take the fight to the owlbears' home. Now, I know that I said I was confident in my strength at this point, but Honor Mode added a special little treat called a whole other fucking owlbear. Could I have taken on the one owlbear by myself? Probably. But two? I would need some assistance. Unfortunately, I kind of went on autopilot and accidentally looted a bunch of stuff from Edwin's corpse, but don't worry, I realized pretty quick and fixed it by beating my meat in front of the whole camp. My team avatar made their way into the cave, honorably forced someone else to start the fight for us, then jumped in ready for some owlbear blood. 
fuck. Okay, so I may need to reevaluate my plan a little bit. How about this? Instead of wizard, I'm going to turn Iroh into a draconic sorcerer to lean more heavily into his title as Dragon of the West, and because Quicken Spell is bonkers. Also, considering I got my ass pounded harder than I did to your dad last night, I needed to rethink my approach to saving the tieflings. Priestess Gut is kind of a pushover, provided you can take her out while she's alone, but Dror Ragslin and Minthara are entirely different stories. There was no real way around Dror Ragslin, that was something I was just gonna have to figure out over time, but Minthara was another story. If we tell her where the grove is, we'll be able to fight her with an army and a gate at our side. For those of you thinking that this is dishonorable, I would like to point out that fuck you, this is my video, I do what I want. So I restarted the game and quickly retraced my steps to put me right back at level 3. This time I was going to try a more diplomatic approach, where I'd take those super fun and interesting fights the DM works so hard on and say, nah dude, persuasion check. Also, fuck the owlbears, Brynna and Andrit can figure that out themselves. I introduced the power of diplomacy to the remaining tomb robbers, stole some literature, made a detour towards the harper stash to grab a spider egg I'll never use, and met a groomer named Raphael. Come. I then headed to the blighted village, had Iro sweet talk a goblin into letting us through the checkpoint, cleared a bunch of little tasks in the village such as getting an invisibility potion, grabbing some necromancer smut, and freeing a lost child. Look, I can keep going, but essentially all I've done so far is a bunch of little honeydews that aren't very exciting in order to get enough experience to hit level 4. The reason we need level 4 is because of a completely broken feat called Tavern Brawler. Tavern Brawler is the monk's best friend and will significantly raise our damage and, more importantly, our accuracy. So, I saved some people from a burning building, engaged in some casual racism with my fellow Fire Nation, walked in on your parents making you, then finally recruited Lump the Enlightened, which gave us enough experience to reach level 4 as well as give us the tool we would need to defeat Dror Ragslin. Okay, so, take a look at this. You see this? It sucks. We're redoing it. We take Zuko and start him back at level 1 in order to adjust his stats to favor his strength, selecting Tavern Brawler for our feet, and accidentally selecting Fist of Unbroken Air instead of Burning Hands. So we have to fork over another 100 gold to Withers to fix that. Then we change Shadowheart to a pure monk for maximum damage output. Why is she naked? But don't worry, we're taking a block of ice with us, so we'll be fine. Sokka as a ranger made sense, considering he grew up as a warrior and hunter for his tribe, cold resistance, but honestly none of that is as defining as his trusty boomerang. So fuck that noise, we throw shit now. This means we're gonna have to get him a new weapon. Now, boomerangs are not a part of the game and I couldn't find any mods that would put them in the game, so we'll just have to figure out what the next best thing is. The boomerang in the show is a thrown weapon that mostly seems to make bonking noises when it hits someone in the head. This rules out piercing and slashing damage and the only throwable weapon that deals bludgeoning is a light hammer, so I googled where to find one and spend the next few nights sleeping at the grove trying to force a hammer to spawn in Damon's inventory. During this time, I was ambushed by a Starion who was looking to pop my neck open like a Capri Sun. Now, rules as written, I do need to point out that I was unaware of this attack when he launched it, meaning that a Starion broke rule number one of the challenge and you know what that means. <laughs> If a vampire dies in the woods, will he still suck me? The answer is no, sadly. Back to Sokka, I eventually get bored of trying to force the hammer to spawn and damage stock, so I check the blacksmith's house in the Blighted Village and oh look at that! <laughs> Guess Astarian died for nothing, huh? Our next plan of attack, infiltrate the goblin camp. Now, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, but you can't tell anybody. Come here. No, come closer. Closer. <clears throat> this game is racist. Not in a real way, but in a more tolerable, fictional, racist way. The goblins hate every race that isn't them, but thanks to the ways of the absolute, the goblins have implemented an affirmative action plan for drow elves. And thankfully, we have our very own master of disguise, Sokka. Now that I've reclassed him into an eldritch knight, he can learn how to cast disguise self and pass himself off as a drow and get me inside the camp. And since we are now turtly enough for the turtle club, the goblins in the camp will let us walk around the place as if we're receiving a game award. We make our way over to Hama, who offers to burn our skin for us, no thanks, been there, done that. Nevertheless, she insists on helping us, much like the real Hama, but I'm a smart boy, an honorable boy, who won't fall for such an obvious trap. So I challenge her to combat and let my Fire Nation superiority put her down. Yeah, Fire Nation! Next up is Azula. 
sort of. Azula by herself is a total powerhouse, but she also has a few guards with her as well as a scrying eye hovering around her that will call for reinforcements as soon as it notices us fighting. Fucking tattletale. So I convince her that I'm actually on her side, much like how Zuko does in the show, and clear a bunch of goblins out of the temple, leaving just Admiral Zhao. I make a quick detour to go free Halsin and see if I can get his help in the fight to come, but uh, <laughs> hey, dumbass, Halsin doesn't help you if the grove is under threat, so... He turns into a rat and leaves. Probably should have looked into that. Huh. Back to the throne room, Zhao is surrounded by five goblins and two normal people, making me just a little outnumbered. But I already thought of this. Remember that ogre, Lump? Oh, and by the way, I may have stopped by Roa and bought a scroll of lightning bolt. Was I overprepared for this encounter? The answer is honor. With two of my three targets slain, all that was left was to challenge Azula to an epic showdown at the Grove. But before we can do that, we have to long rest. Now, long resting in this game is how you progress certain parts of the story, like how we saw with the Starion earlier. I don't really know how the game chooses what scene to play and when, but there are a few that can just straight up end your game right there. I was hoping that by minimizing my long rest as much as possible, I would be able to just kind of skirt around these cutscenes. So when the night before the war I suddenly had Lazelle in my throat with a knife, I realized that I was dangerously close to just losing the run outright. Luckily, Zuko has a way with the strong warrior types, and I was able to talk her down from slitting my throat, sending her away and letting me go to bed with the world's most awkward erection. And finally, on the morning of the great battle, I talked to Zevlor, sounded the horn, and declared open war on Azula. Kobe! Back villain, I have my trusty boomerang! It didn't come back. I forgot to bind it. Oh shit. I call this the Oppenheimer. You know what? I'm curious. What does this cube do? It just looks like it's your mom. Try something else. Bro, I killed the thing. Shut up. Oh my god! Where are you going? Did this guy just pick up my hammer? That would be it. That's probably not gonna work. All right, Zuko, time to finish her off. I did it! And finally, after like two whole attempts, I, Prince Zuko of the Fire Nation, ended the tyranny of my sister and liberated the tieflings and the druids from their oppressors, bringing balance to the world. And you know what? I'm gonna go back to those owlbears and I'm gonna show them who's boss! Fuck. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, cool. If you liked the video, there's a button for that. If you'd like to see more content like this, please let me know and check out the Twitch channel. Link is in the description below. And lastly, I wanted to thank you for bearing through the shilling. Bye.